Hi, I'm Erwin McCone, Director of Golf Operations at Briar Ridge Country Club and Certified Golf Course Superintendent. Come visit my blog at www.turfdoctor.blogspot.com. Today, we're going to talk about why golf course superintendents have to engage in such practices like aerification, slicing, spiking, and verticutting. We're going to take my most favorite device and take a plug out of the soil surface and take a look at the profile and we're going to explain exactly why those practices are important to move water and give you a quality playing surface. Well we've taken a nice plug from the green and uh, open it up and take a look here. We can see here's an old aerification vein. Here's another one. Uh, this is where we've <clears throat> made an aerification hole and poured sand in it. That's in another video. So if we take this plug and we break it up, golf greens are famous for accumulating a lot of organic matter. And that's just leaf tissue and roots and rhizomes and things like that at the soil surface that really prevent water from moving through this surface down into the root zone uh, to where the roots can, can get the water. And, and that's important because we want this top to be as dry as can be so it's a firm, uh, nice, firm, playable surface for the golfer where the water is still available. So we want to move water down below. So if I take this plug and I simply shake it and I can wash it uh, with some water here shortly. But as we break this apart, and I just grab this soil and just let it break apart where it wants to, we can see that those channels that hold that, that real porous material where water can go down and infiltrate and get through that, that's where my roots like to go. So good roots uh, require lots of, of good air channels and water movement. The massive accumulation of organic matter. And if I were to tear this, you can see that, that we can't even break the soil out of here. This is, this is just a very thick mat of plant material. And water is not going to want to infiltrate through that. There's too much waxy uh, material, lignans, and other things that are going to just bind that water up and, and not allow it to move. So by making these channels through this mat, that's how we get water to infiltrate. We can get this top to dry down, the water to sit underneath, and make a very fine playable surface. Well, I hope now you have a better understanding about what happens at the top layer of a golf course putting green and why some of the cultural methods that we practice are necessary. Hopefully this will help you to react like our golfers react here at Briar Ridge when we tell them that greens have been aerified. Hi ladies. Hey, I, hi. Hey, I hi. just wanted to inform you of some course updates. Uh, today we've aerified all the greens. Really? Yeah. So maybe it doesn't always go like that, but our golfers seem to understand that it is a necessary evil. And I hope now maybe you don't see your superintendent as some maniacal demon sitting behind a desk thinking about ways to torture their players. How can I punish them, golfers? I'm tired of the complaints. I know. We're going to airify. We're gonna airify. We're gonna airify. We're gonna airify. We're gonna airify. Airify! In part two of this video, we're gonna look at some of the tools that we use to examine the infiltration rates of greens so that we can actually make management decisions based on scientific data. Until next time, I'm Erwin McCone. Visit me at my turf blog and tee it high.